Every day I'm hustling, every day I'm hustling. How's it going YouTube? Just wanna make a video today on how to tune your amp, right? How to set those gains. There's a lot of different ways you can do it, a lot of ways that cost money. <laughs> uh, most people don't have an O-scope laying around or a couple grand to buy one. Um, there's obviously the DD-1 by a SMD, which is a great device, but again, that's gonna set you back a couple hundred bucks. Uh, I've been doing car audio for over 20 years now, uh, doing my own installs, and I have always used the same way to tune and I have never burnt a coil, I have never fried an amp, and I have always gotten the best performance out of my amp without overheating it, and again, without overheating and burning up the coils on my speakers, okay? And how do I do that? It's completely free. You don't have to buy anything, right? You've been born with these tools, and what are they? They're your ears, tuning by ear. All right, so what's the catch? Here's the catch, okay? You need to be ultra sensitive with your ears and to be able to identify, okay, when your speakers start to sound distorted, okay? Distortion is your enemy, okay? You don't want distortion playing through your speakers because what's gonna happen is you're gonna blow your speakers, okay? Distortion is when you set your gains too high on your amplifier and you're clipping your signal, okay? This is what a normal sine wave looks like. See those nice peaks and valleys, nice and rounded on the top and rounded at the bottom? Okay, when you set your gains too high, you get a clip signal like this. You see the difference? Okay, those peaks and valleys that were nicely rounded, now they're squared off on the top and squared off on the bottom. So instead of your subwoofers or speakers, right, doing a nice up and down smooth rhythm, they're now choppy, okay? And your, the sound is going to definitely be deteriorated and you can hear it, you can actually hear it, okay? You can hear that distortion and uh, you, you can actually, if, if you can see the rhythmic nature of your speakers, you can actually see them getting cut off, right? They're not doing the full cycle, okay? So again, you gotta be very sensitive to these kind of things. Um, but again, it's totally possible, right? It, it's kind of like an acquired taste, okay? It's an acquired hearing of being able to sit in a vehicle and hear that those speakers are getting overworked, okay? Those speakers are getting a clip signal. But I've been doing it, like I said, for over 20 years and I have never burnt a coil on a speaker. I have never blown an amp because I have used common sense and I've been very, very um, aware of what distortion sounds like. So any example that I give you, okay, through this video here, you're just not gonna be able to hear it as you can in person, okay? Because it's just not gonna translate through the speakers here. It's not gonna translate through your speakers that you're watching this at at home. Um, you just need to actually sit in a vehicle. And you know, if you're about to change out a stereo in your car, maybe you're gonna swap out the OEM stereo, you know, turn it up, keep turning the volume up and you'll hear the speakers eventually start to get distorted. Okay, so you, you can practice with it too, right? Before you put in your expensive gear, right? If you're gonna take out your OEM crappy speakers anyway, right? Start practicing and seeing, you know, if you can figure out when the distortion is coming into play, okay? It's not that difficult to do and it's not that difficult to hear, okay? And, and the better you get at it, the longer you do it, right? The closer to that line you can get. And uh, I've ridden that line pretty close, okay? Uh, but I've never crossed into distortion. I can, I'm proud to say that. So here we go. All right, so I'm going to show you now my ways of tuning by ear so that you can be an amplifier whisperer and be a guru of setting your own gains as well, okay? Because again, with practice, um, you can get pretty close to that line of distortion without crossing over and, and get the maximum output from your amp into your speakers without doing any damage. That's the goal, right? That's the ultimate goal. So uh, I'm going to explain the process in two separate ways, okay? The first way is if you have a factory front stage, meaning your door speakers, your pillars, and you have an amplified subwoofer, okay? So you have an amplifier and sub in the back, but everything else is stock, okay? Because that's gonna be different from how I do it, okay, in my setup, which is everything is amplified, okay? My front stage is amplified with my tweeters and mids, and my rear stage is amplified with my subwoofers, okay? So first scenario, let's say you have a stock stereo, um, but you added a sub and an amp, right? That's what most people start out doing, okay? I know that's what I did in high school, and that's what I did, you know, in the beginning, right? I just wanted that bass. Turn up the bass! So this is what you do. 
Okay, step one. So we're gonna work at the head unit, okay? So you're either gonna have an OEM factory head unit or you're gonna have an aftermarket head unit, okay? Either way, you need to get your equalizer settings um, on, on track, okay? Now, if you have an aftermarket head unit and you have any kind of loudness control, bass boost, anything like that, um, I always recommend not using those, okay? It's really not necessary if you have a properly sized amp and subwoofers and you got your gain set properly and you don't need that junk, okay? But here's my word of caution, okay? If you ever think you're going to use it or turn it on later, then you need to do that now, okay? And leave it like that because what's gonna happen is if you don't uh, turn those on when you set your gains, okay? What's gonna happen is you're gonna set your gains with those deselected, they're gonna be off, okay? Your gains are gonna be set perfect, but then what happens when you go onto your head unit and you click that bass boost button or you hit the loudness or extra loud, right? Which some uh, aftermarket head units have. Well, guess what? You are now gonna send a clip signal to your subwoofers and bye-bye voice coil. Okay, I don't wanna see that happen to you. So um, either leave them off but if you know, okay, if you really need to use the loudness button and the bass booster that comes with your aftermarket um, head units, then turn them on, okay? And then we'll set the gains with them accordingly, okay? That way, okay, you're not gonna send a clip signal and blow your speakers, okay? The only thing you could do is then you can turn them off and then, you know, obviously your output's gonna be reduced, okay? But you're not gonna go over that threshold. That's what I always recommend people do, right? Play it safe, okay? Protect your investment because car audio is not cheap, okay? That's step number one. All right, uh, one more uh, actually addition to that is if you have equalizer settings, also an aftermarket head unit with uh, different equalizer settings, then go ahead and set those up too. I know me, once I got my equalizer set just how I like it dialed in, I don't touch it. It doesn't matter what music I play, it sounds good across the board. Um, and I recommend you do the same, okay? And that's another whole video of how to do that properly. But um, if you have a OEM unit, right? A factory head unit, you typically have a treble and bass control, right? Sometimes you have mid bass, but usually you have treble and bass. Um, what I also recommend too is set your bass setting where you want it and leave it there, okay? If you don't trust yourself, then turn it all the way up because here's the thing. You wanna tune your amplifier, the gain setting, where you have those controls at because let's say you have the bass on your factory head unit halfway right right in the middle and then we tune your amplifier perfectly gains are set perfect everything's good to go and then you're riding up front one day you want to bang extra hard so you decide to take that bass knob on your factory head unit and crank it up guess what's going to happen Turn up the bass. Your amp's gonna send a click, clip signal to your sub and your voice coils are gonna take the big sleep, okay? They're gonna go bye-bye. So don't do that. Make sure your head unit is set, your settings, your equalizer, your bass, all that, okay? And then don't touch it. You don't need to, okay? If you wanna adjust the bass on the fly, well, guess what? That's why you have a bass knob, right? That connects to your amplifier. So we'll talk about that later. That is how you control the volume of your bass, okay? Nowhere else. Nowhere else, okay? Otherwise, you're gonna get yourself in trouble. So that's step two. All right, so the next step, this is handled in one of two ways, okay? If you have a factory amplified front stage, right? Doors, pillars, or if you have an aftermarket amplified front stage like I do back here in the Hummer, okay? Uh, the steps are gonna be similar, but just slightly different. So this is what you're gonna do, okay? Assuming that you have uh, just a stock front stage, right? Stock tweeter, stock, stock door speakers, and the only thing you have is an amplified sub and subwoofer, okay? This is what you're gonna do. You're gonna go to your head unit with everything already set, right? Your settings on your equalizer and all that, and you're gonna start turning the volume up, okay? You're gonna start turning it up to your max volume that you listen to before you hit distortion. Again, you should be able to hear distortion pretty clearly through factory speakers because they start to sound pretty crappy, okay? and uh, figure out what that volume is, okay? Um, every car is different. Let's say your volume goes up to 50, okay? From, from zero to 50, okay? That number might be 40, okay? It might be 45, who knows, okay? Typically, it's not all the way up because you will get some distortion, in my experience, from a factory radio if you turn it all the way up. So figure out what that number is, okay? Um, let's say it's 40, okay? That's gonna be 
the volume max that you turn your radio to ever, okay? Um, like I said, because once we dial in your amplifier, okay, it's gonna be dialed in to your max volume on your head unit, which is set at 40, okay? Again, if you decide that you wanna get extra loud one day and you're cruising around with your bass and you know you have it at that max 40 and you're like, ooh, man, I want a little bit louder and you turn it 42, 43, 44. Turn up the bass! Oh, you just sent a clip signal to your speakers, okay? And uh, that is why, okay, it does take discipline to listen to your music properly, okay? And not waste your money by blowing your gear. So um, if you can turn it up to 50 with uh, no distortion, great, okay? Then your radio was designed cleverly by smart engineers that understood, uh, you know, not clipping your signal, not <laughs> distorting your speakers. But uh, usually that's not the case. So just turn it up as loud as you can okay, before you start hearing your speakers sound like crap. It's that simple, okay? And, and, and pay attention because you can hear, you know, very, very, very faintly uh, that line as soon as you start crossing it, okay? And uh, again, just use your common sense and you'll be just fine, okay? Okay, so now we're ready to start tuning your subwoofer amp, okay? So this is what you do. Um, I recommend if you don't have a bass knob that came with your amp from the factory, I recommend getting a PAC LC1 or any other kind of inline RCA bass knob so you have control to mitigate the bass from the front of your vehicle, okay? Looks something like that, right? You can get anything out there that will work. Um, you know, there's plenty of manufacturers that make them. So, you know, pick your favorite. And the reason why that's important is, right, it's gonna allow you to turn your bass down, okay? Not up because we're gonna tune it maxed out, okay? Um, that's another misconception, okay? You're not gonna be able to get more bass out of your system that we're gonna tune it for, okay? Because all the gain knob does is it turns it down, okay? Because if you unplug the bass knob from your amplifier, it's gonna be maxed out. So when you plug in the bass knob, it actually reduces the amount of output by turning the knob to the left. If you turn the knob all the way to the right and turn your gain on your bass knob all the way up, it would be the same as unplugging the bass knob from your amplifier, okay? So this is what we're gonna do. Once you get your gain knob or your bass knob routed to the front, okay? And again, you don't have to have one in order to tune your amp properly. It's just recommended so that that way, you know, if you don't want a lot of bass one day, okay, you can just simply go to your bass knob and turn it down and you don't have to mess with the settings in your head unit because that can get you in trouble. We talked about that, remember? If you go in there and you turn the bass down for maybe a couple songs, and then when you come back the next day, you turn your bass all the way up, forgetting that you set it at the halfway point. And then one day you get crazy and turn the bass knob on your uh, you know, remote knob all the way up. And guess what? You're sending a clip signal. So if you wanna control the bass, do not control it from the head unit, get a bass knob, run it somewhere in the cabin where it's easy for you to control, done deal, okay? Protect your investment. So now we're on to setting the actual gains. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have your music. I recommend not doing it in your neighborhood because it's a great way to make enemies, okay? Go to a, a, a parking lot like Home Depot or Lowe's way back in the corner. This is where I do all my tuning, right? Um, you can go behind a Walmart and you know find tons of open space where you're not gonna bother anybody, right? Because we don't wanna be that guy. So what you do, is right you you turn your radio on or you play a cd you play music that you typically listen to at the volume that we already established right let's say it was 40 right out of 50. so at 40 your music still sounds crisp it sounds clean there's no distortion right it's pretty blaring loud and then what you're going to do is now we're going to start setting the gain on your subwoofers okay so this is how you do it you got the gain on your bass knob all the way up okay you don't want to set the gain on your amplifier with the bass knob halfway or low. You wanna turn the gain on the bass knob all the way up. That way you're not tempted to go louder and blow your speakers. Okay, so set the bass knob all the way up and then you're gonna go back to your amplifier, okay? You need to have your head in the cabin while you do this. Hopefully your amplifier is installed in such a way where you can do this yourself. But a lot of times you're gonna need a buddy to do this, okay? You're gonna to have to sit in the driver's seat where um, you know, you're gonna be listening to the music, where you're gonna be able to hear it and you know, hopefully see your subwoofers. I don't know what your setup is, 
but um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like a, a double-edged sword here. You, you just can't really cover all the angles yourself unless your setup you know, is like in a hatchback where you can sit in the driver's seat, you can look back at your subwoofers and you can adjust the gain on your amplifier and do everything yourself, right? Usually that's not the case, so you're gonna need a buddy, okay? But you wanna be in the cabin listening, that's the most important thing, and your buddy can be back at the amplifier, right, with a little screwdriver turning the gain up very, very slowly on your amplifier, right? Until you give him the signal, stop, good, perfect. Okay, and that's really all there is to it, okay? And you're gonna listen, you're gonna have that bass starting to blend in with your mids and highs, and it's gonna make a beautiful symphony, okay? And when that symphony gets ruined is when you'll hear the blaring, um, just distorted, unclean, dirty sound, okay? That, that's, that clip signal, and you'll hear it, okay? I promise you, if, if you, understand what clean music sounds like and what distorted music sounds like, you can identify it, okay? So what I recommend is keep going, keep going, right? And if it gets too loud for you before you even get close to distortion, great, you're done. You don't even gotta worry about it, right? A lot of people, they don't even need to get near distortion before it sounds, uh, before you know it's at a level where they're happy with it. Some people, on the other hand, right, they wanna push that edge. They wanna get maximum SPL. They wanna push that barrier and squeeze every bit of amperage out of their amplifier, like me. That's what I do. So what I do is I, I keep having them turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, until I hear distortion. I physically hear it, okay? And then I, have, I, I back it off little by little until that distortion is gone, okay? And then, boom, done deal. Maximum output, minimal to zero distortion, and you've protected your system because the settings on your head unit, they're safe. You're not gonna touch them. Your gain knob was all the way up, okay? Which is absolutely vital because if you don't do that, again, what's gonna happen is, um, you know, one day if you set your, uh, your gains on your amp with your bass knob halfway up, well, if you're feeling extra funky one day and you're playing a song that really slams and you're like, oh man, I wanna hit harder. You turn that bass knob all the way up. Turn up the bass! Boom, your speakers are gonna fry, okay? But that won't happen if you have your bass knob all the way up when you tune your gains. That's the most important thing that you wanna do. So uh, the only addition to that, uh, that process is if you have an amplified front stage, okay? And I'm gonna cover that really quick and we'll call it good. All right, so the only difference of this entire process, if you have an amplifier for your mids and highs like I do as well, is before you start tuning your subwoofer amp, you're gonna do that same process for your mids and highs, okay? Most mids and highs don't have a bass knob or inline level control, which you can get if you want, but it's unnecessary. So what you're gonna do is simply just set your head unit as previously described, okay? Turn it to that max volume that you listen to, and then go ahead and start turning up the gain playing your music, right? Playing your CD, whatever music you typically listen to is what I like, uh, I recommend, because you're gonna be more sensitive to hearing that song, right? Um, don't play music that you never listen to because you're not gonna pick out, hey, that doesn't sound right, right? Play a song that you're very familiar with, okay? So that you'll identify, hey, that's not sounding right, or it's sounding kind of muddy, or something's wrong, right? It'll help you pick out distortion easier. So same process, start turning up the gain, on your mid and high amplifier until you get that sound of distortion, okay? And then go ahead and back it off so it's a clean signal again, it's that simple. Then you can go ahead and move on to the other process of tuning your subwoofer amplifier. So I hope that helped. You know, the reason why I'm doing this is to help people save a lot of money and uh, make some very expensive mistakes, okay? Um, because I have a lot of friends that, uh, you know, have made simple mistakes that they could have fixed um, you have decided to get greedy, so to speak, and uh, you know, turn the bass boost all the way up, turn the gains all the way up, turn the bass knobs all the way up, and uh, you know, not really caring about the sound quality that's coming out of it, caring more about just um, the sheer volume of sound, okay? And, and that at the detrimental price of the speakers and the voice coils. So uh, don't be that guy and uh, set your gains properly and you'll be a happy camper for many years to come and your speakers will thank you. So I hope this helped.
All right, guys, and I got to add one more thing in there. As usual, if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, and please like this video if it did add value to you. Um, I do how-to videos every once in a while, um, very rarely actually, but I might do more if um, this added value to people. And you know, that's what it really is about. You know, I'm not here to make money or to you know market a product. I'm here just to help other enthusiasts um, that may be struggling with um, you know spending unnecessary money that they don't need to and uh, help them uh, become better car audio enthusiasts themselves by uh, being able to tune gains on your amplifiers. That's a big deal, right? A lot of people, you know, have buddies come over and do it and, you know, buy expensive equipment to do it. And it's unnecessary, right? Like I said, I've been doing it for over 20 years. So hope this added value to you guys. And again, please subscribe, stay up to date on uh, all the videos that I have coming through. All right, let's do this. Get loud. Turn up the pain.